And with that, we will move into what is going to be a very exciting presentation. Um, this is to open the 1964 time capsule from the former admin building at 651 Pine Street, meaning the items in it are 58 years old. And we will then move on to accept materials from each member of the board. I understand that departments and others have made contributions to the time capsule that will be, I hate this word, entombed, but I guess that's the word, uh, in this building to be opened in 2072. I expect us all to be here that day. This, and this will be given by uh, Mr. Angstrad. Okay. Good. Mic's on. You can hear me. Yes. Perfect. So yes, as, as uh, Chairman Schaff said, um, that's in, it. This is it. So in uh, September 26, 1964, they had a dedication ceremony for the tower, and of course, it's appropriate we're opening it because we're in the process of demolishing the tower, as you can occasionally hear in the background if you're here at the at the chambers. Um, we we were able to find it um, in the courtyard of the old complex. Um, we uh rescued it from its concrete vault and it has not been opened by me or anyone else that i know of people could have snuck into my office but um until today so without further ado i'll open it up and we'll see Everybody what we have our camera open first before you da, 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 da. <laughs> okay there we go all right so we have a Letter from the Johnny Miller Travel Bureau to whom it may concern, which we could open up. And then uh, City of Martinez, predictions for the City of Martinez. The 1964 annual report from the uh, Contra Costa County. Looks very thin. Very thin compared to today's. All of the emergency numbers for fire, police, as well as the uh, for the county. Are they five number digit uh, five number five digit phone numbers or are they actually no they're they're, they're seven okay now they are seven back in nineteen probably four one five area code uh, I, I grew up with five digit phone numbers four one five yeah yep four one five absolutely I do we all remember that because we stepped back another copy of the nineteen sixty four annual report. A picture of the building building maintenance department staff. <laughs> Looks like these things have held up very well. Yes, they have. Because again, it was in this cardboard box, and there was a, a a large bag of silica gel on top of it, and that was all the preservation. A baggie, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Contra Costa County Office's telephone directory from July 1965. So. And instructions on how to operate your push button telephone, your new push button telephone. And then we have a copy of the photo of Contra Costa's first courthouse built in 1855 and demolished in 1903. So the uh, metal has rusted away. But this was. Well. Yeah, the photo did not survive very well, unfortunately. So, copy of the special edition on the administration building dedication from the Morning News Gazette, September twenty fifth, nineteen sixty four. And obviously, we will open these up and then put them on display the invitation and program for the administration building dedication, they're all sealed, so I don't want to rip them up. Be displayed in the new building when it's completed along. Right, we'll have a, we have a history wall there where we'll have these, the Martinez Area Chamber of Commerce letter. I will, if you'd like something from the uh, city clerk, city of Antioch. It says, Jean Fashbaugh. 
uh, something from the city of Walnut Creek. It's a letter from uh, Joseph McBrien, who was the uh, county administrator at the time the building was built. And we can, um, I can probably read that too, if you'd like. Just an inventory of some of the items. A letter from the city of El Cerrito. Uh, Leo Armstrong, mayor. Frank Cortese, council member, Gordon Langlois, councilman, James Darty, and Roy Mespelt. Yeah. City of Clayton. So it looks like they've got contributions from most of the. A proclamation from. City of Walnut Creek. Uh, City of San Pablo uh, from Mayor Thomas Burns. County dedication. For, it doesn't say what's that. So <laughs> let's explore further. City of Richmond, George Carroll, Mayor. Contra Costa Development Association, a highway map, uh, an industrial survey, and some other uh, correspondence from the Development Association. Uh, from the city of Pinole, but no indication of what's in there. Not sure what that is. It just has a name on the front. Uh, it looks like the final item is some pictures. We'll see if they survived. So a copy of the dedication program from um, a photo, sort of a aerial photo. I'm surprised there's no photo of the Board of Supervisors. There may be. There was one that was pretty damaged. Oh, um, that's right. This looks like a view from the top of the tower of the dedication ceremony. Well, since our photos are all in the cloud, we'll put a we'll, we'll still put a physical photo in the new one, but we'll put a thumb drive too. Uh, and here, here is a photo of the old board chamber, which you'll all remember, because it looks yeah, wow. very much like it was <laughs> from when it was first put into action. And then we have a map. Mission pamphlets and a, well, you see what's at the top there, reporting on the local, uh, High school team, the Bulldogs. but the, <laughs> but yeah. So the 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 paper from the the day before the dedication ceremony. So let's see. We have you wanted to Martinez predicts the predictions for the city of Martinez. The predictions for the city of Martinez, the long range general plan, which has been adopted to guide the future development of the Martinez planning area was necessarily based upon projections of future growth and characteristics of the citizenry. These growth prospects were based on consideration of the rapid expansion now taking place in the county as a whole, an evaluation of present population densities coupled with a calculation of the population holding capacity of the remaining developable land and the impact of future freeway development in the area. The geographical area to which these estimates relate differ somewhat from the present city limits of Martinez, so as to eliminate the vagaries of the ever-changing boundary line and establish a firmer base for prediction purposes. 
For this reason, the projections herein contained relate to the areas within census tract 16 through 21 as delineated by the US Bureau of Census in 1960. So the 1960 census for Martinez was 20,988 folks. And their projection for 1980 was from a low of 36,900 to a high of 55,000. So those are that's within the range, from what I understand. Um, their school enrollment numbers, which they projected between 10,000 and 15,000. Employment numbers between 11,000 and 16,000. Per capita incomes, um, they were estimating that total personal income would be between 116,000 and 173,000. Oh. Not sure exactly, you know, they, they don't have any details in there about what those would be. Um, automobile ownership projections were between 19,400 and 28,930 for Martinez. Imagine it's probably on the upper end of that. Yeah. Yeah. These were projections for 1980. Did they think the building yeah. would be obsolete by 1980 <laughs> or that would be breaking into the time capsule at that time? Well, that's about as far as they were willing to go for that. Wow. Let's see if they had any others. No, um, I think the other thing that might be worth reading would be um, the CAO's letter. If I can find where I put that again, sorry. Ah, so this is the letter from Joseph McBrien, the CAO. The new county administration building fulfills space needs which have existed for a long time and which have hitherto been met by renting space in a diversity of separate locations. The new structure is functional in that it permits grouping of departments which have related responsibilities and which require space close to one another to permit rapid interdepartmental communications and conferences. The arrangement is conducive to improved public service. The financing plan used to pay for the structure, lease with option to purchase through the, co excuse me, through the cooperation of the Contra Costa Employees Retirement Association requires payments, which on the average over the life of the lease be equivalent to one cent of the county tax rate, presuming a normal upward trend in assessed valuation. It is not expected that the payments will result in a tax rate increase for present or future taxpayers. The building is part of the overall county civic center plan, which includes provisions for additional courts, a new jail and other offices. In the total picture, the new building will be blended architecturally with existing older structures and additional new structures to form a pleasing complex aesthetically and to form a functional layout in which county services can be rendered most effectively. In its proportions, the new building is imposing, but its real significance is that the Board of Supervisors is looking ahead to meet the requirements of the future in a county which now undoubtedly has already reached the 500,000 population level. It's interesting to note, this is pre-Prop 13. So the Board of Supervisors did set the tax rate every year. Um, so that's interesting to hear when he's talking about that. And we, so Sarah, we're, they were thinking about it back then. And so in, on the back, they have some projections too, out to the year 1985 in which they, uh, projected the population of the county would be at a million in 1985 with an assessed valuation of 2.5 billion. So I don't know historically whether we passed those numbers before or after that, but that was their projections for the building. So at, at this point, I think, you know, we transition over to the new, unless there's anything else we can play. Well, as we clean these materials up, we'll make them available. Um, we can photograph them in Victorium, put them up on the website for people to, to, to look at, scan what we can scan. And then obviously we'll have a, a, a chance to have a display of some or all of the items on a rotating basis in the new building that we're constructing where the tower used to stand. Well, thank you. That was exciting. I thought there'd be more. So in a way that's good because it is 58 years ago. Somebody on the board wasn't even born then. Um, Me. <laughs> I, I was. Um, 
and that will allow us to get to uh, what we're going to put in now. Um, I know the board members are each going to make a, a comment, but Mr. Angstrad, could you talk about what else is in going into uh, the time capsule that uh, will be placed in this building? Certainly. So we, we, in the same way, we constructed a concrete vault as part of the building, and we're going to collect materials. Uh, we've collected materials from most of the departments already. They've already filled up a uh, container this size. I have it packed up in my office. We're going to accept the supervisor's materials. Um, we'll add the proclamation when finished and the CAO's materials, um, you know, and a copy of the current budget, which is much thicker. Um, would all, our current budget will almost take up this, this box alone. Uh, and then we will place them in the vault, which is sort of under the planter area out there. Um, so it's fully concrete lined, and we'll put in, you know, preservation materials, um, seal up the boxes, and place them in that um, next, probably early next week, because I have to get Public Works over to help me do it. Well, and we didn't take a board photo this year, which is fine, because we were still in COVID. But I think if you go back to the 2018, um, that'll reflect, I don't care who reflects the board uh, chair. So if you want to take the one, did we do one for you uh, in 20? I think mine was the last to be pre-COVID. I think it was the last time we did a formal board portrait. But let's just make sure one photo of the board, of the current board goes in. All right. Well, thank you for that. And um, I'm going to start by district. District one, supervisor. Why don't we start with district five? I don't, you don't have to always start with one. You don't want to start? Uh, either. Okay. All right. You want me I'll to start? I'll start with supervisor. Who would like to start? All right. I'm going to be the teacher. Supervisor Joya. Okay. All right. <laughs> so um, I, I decided to um, place some items that were representative of what is happening today in our county and really in our um, in our society generally, because what we do is um, really uh, impacted so much by what's going on uh, on our planet and in our country. So, and I did um, I did include a very short note, which sort of ties together some of the items I put in here, and I'll I'll start by reading the note. Um, I hand wrote a note on county letterhead. And again, you'll you'll get the um, the tie together of these items as I read them. And my note is very simple. We faced enormous challenges. We persevered. We had faith in our young people and future leaders to protect and fight for our future. We know you will have the wisdom and the will to continue the fight for our planet and our communities. So that was my note. Um, and um, the items in the box, starting off as, they, as the son of a high school civics and history teacher, I think history is important. And I have a CD, which is Introduction to the Contra Costa Historical Society. And I posted a note that says, remember and learn from our history. Um, I included, how can we not acknowledge the challenges of COVID? And I included a mask and an at home, at home test kit with a note, we protected ourselves and our neighbors. Um, we are a, a county that um, encircles the bay. So I included a San Francisco Bay trail map that shows both the completed and planned segments for the Bay Trail with a note, we hope and envision the trail will be completed. Um, so 50 years. Uh, I included to recognize our history and the land we occupied. I included a t-shirt, uh, Richmond, California, fifth annual indigenous walk with a note, uh, honor our ancestors. Okay, I will get back. 
Um, knowing also that we are, again, a shoreline county with all the challenges we face. And I have been involved in a coastal cleanup day for the last 32 years, and Diane has as well in her part of the county. And um, there, there are all the challenges of plastic on our, on our shorelines and of sea level rise and all those issues. And so a t-shirt from a <laughs> from one of the coastal cleanups that says the beach could use some love and California Coastal Cleanup Day. And this is from 2015. Um, since a lot of the work we do is um, regarding making our um, shoreline, our air, our environment um, resilient and addressing shore, uh, uh, climate change, I did include Al Gore's book, An Inconvenient Truth. Recognizing the challenges that we have faced, um, a pin, that's, and since we did declare this, racism is a public health crisis. We did do a resolution on that. This happens to be a Kaiser Permanente pin. Um, and finally, um, since I went to El Cerrito High School, this is a pin um, from El Cerrito High School has now been rebuilt, but it has a depiction of the original El Cerrito High School that says 1941 to 2005. Um, and um, recognizing our education and our roots. So a pin from El Cerrito High School. And again, I think for me, the letter tied together that these are all challenges that we faced, but we are optimistic about the future with young people and a new generation of leaders to continue to make our community um, a strong place. Thank you. That will be very informative to them, as will all of ours. Supervisor Anderson. Yes, and I I don't have is I feel a little bit like we're doing show and tell, which I have not done for a really long time. Um, in my box, I invited all of the cities in my district to send a letter with accompanied by a picture of their city council to talk a little bit about their city, their population, their budget and sort of what, what they anticipate going forward in the future. Um, so I have those. I also wrote a rather long <laughs> letter and I'm not gonna read the whole letter, just sort of describing my role as a county supervisor, the priorities, the issues that we are confronting. I included my biography, I included business cards, I included a little card that we use in our district, information about what our district is. And then I included our holiday card, which includes a picture of my staff because they are such an integral part of what we do in serving the community. I wanted people to know who they were as well. And really um, beyond that, I have these wonderful letters from the town of Moraga, from the city of Lafayette, um, from the city or the town of Danville, City of San Ramon, City of Arinda, and then including we, I did have Blackhawk gave me a copy of their bulletin and their Blackhawk Community Association. And then I included pictures of our Alamo Mac, the one municipal advisory council that, um, that we have, although we do have a Diablo service council, and then a list of those who were serving on committees in my district. The other thing I did include is I'm often out speaking to the community doing PowerPoint presentations. So I gave a abbreviated version of the most recent PowerPoint presentation, which gives a summary of everything from our budget to issues confronting the county. And that is what is in my time capsule. Well, thank you, Supervisor Burgess. So I Googled, what do you put in a time capsule? No, I really didn't. <laughs> I wish I had. <laughs> um, you know, this is this is a moment when you get to talk to people in the future and you kind of think, well, what is it? And I was thinking about the fact that the capsule that we were opening today was set up a year before I was born and how at that time there was so much 
turbulence going on in the in the world at that time and how things as much as they've changed haven't necessarily changed and i just it made me feel very philosophical and introspective when i wrote uh my letter i uh, addressed the current situation in district three the county and the world i gave a background on district three in far east county and shared my priorities and initiatives occurring in 2022. And I closed that letter with a message to my future loved ones, because I could. <laughs> and I just sent my love and encouraged people to continue to um, give and um, serve to make the world a better place. Because we all have to be optimistic and um, look forward to the progress that'll go on in the world. We included a bio and photo of myself and my amazing staff because it's teamwork. Uh, we invited folks from the three cities and the unincorporated areas and we got uh, items from Antioch, Bethel Island, Brentwood, Byron, Discovery Bay, Knightson and Oakley. I thought it was important to include the East Contra Costa County Habitat Conservancy Program because we are preserving so much open space and it'll be interesting to see what, you know, what comes at that time and they'll see what we started with, what we had gotten to at this point, and then they will be hopefully enjoying that open space at that time. I also included a product that's probably what, I don't know, 15, 10 years old, uh, the historical ecology of East Contra Costa. I think history is always interesting. And uh, if that's something that gets lost, um, at least folks will get to see it again. I included harvest time you pick maps, um, recent editions of local papers. I included some of the uh, Delta County Coalition uh, stuff for uh, protecting the Delta. I uh, took the most recent mailer for um, groceries and furniture and all of those kind of things and stuck that in there. And I also included a um, brochure from something that I participated in uh, la la this week, last week. Uh, it was the Future of Diablo Valley Conference, which focused on aviation technology and biotech. So these are all um, things that tell the world what we were thinking about right now. And um, it was a really nice thing. I think we should all kind of think about what we're sending to the future on a regular basis. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Glover. Thank you. This was uh, definitely an opportunity to do some reflection on where the county has been in the last uh, decade or so. And um, so I included some history in terms of myself and the fact that I am the first African American to be a part of the Board of Supervisor. And at that time, it's 150 year history. Um, I included some things really uh, a lot on transportation and where we have been with Highway 4 and the widening of Highway 4, uh, BART coming into our, our system, our county, um, and eBART, because those were very big, significant things. Also happening within the history um, was uh, Los Manos College, the community college districts and the opening of those particular um, colleges. Uh, we also included in there some of the things around refineries and where they have been through our industrial safety ordinance and the fact that refineries now are looking at um, renewables and um, curving the, car uh, the carbon footprint within the county. I also included some things in there about what we've done with domestic violence with the with our zero tolerance initiative. Um, what has happened with the um, 
electrification of housing through our sustainability committee and um, moving from, from gas to uh, electrical. Um, speak a little bit about what has taken place with um, um, the Office of um, Racial Equity, Social Justice and where that is. So we have a lot of documentations on things that have been that's happened, we talked about COVID and um, what has happened with, with COVID. Um, talked about the work that we've done with uh, youth through the youth summits that, that we've had down through the years. Um, and pins of the particular cities in which um, have been a part of the district. All in all, there's some analogy also about pathways in which doors has opened so that we could have um, an opportunity to reflect back on where we will be um, when this capsule is open and where we've been since then. So there's a lot of good information, a lot of brochures that, that's in here from various local and regional agencies that operate. We have, um, a small bus with the Tri Tri Delta Transit and its history, its pathway um, for our future. So just uh, a, a lot of things that gives a historical analysis of where we are today and what our future plans are. Thank you. And um, there are four cities in my district. Uh, so I have letters from each of the cities, uh, photos of their council members. Um, for Walnut Creek, uh, they've included uh, information regarding the Lesher Center for the Arts, which is a, a regional um, amenity for all of us. Um, I, I have a mask also from the city of Walnut Creek. Uh, they all, all cities provided their pins, which is helpful and Clayton provided a pin also. Um, so uh, Pleasant Hill provided some very unique things. They have a stamp from um, the library opening. So uh, took us 50 years to get the one we just opened. So when they uh, are looking at this in 50 years, uh, hopefully they will only have had to remodel. Uh, this uh, actually is a charger from the city of Pleasant Hill, which I think is interesting because um, uh, it will reflect what dinosaurs we are today compared to what it will be like in, in uh, 2072. Um, Pleasant Hill also included, uh, their motto is, we're at the center of everything, and they have some decals about diversity. Um, so I, this is all being placed in here. Uh, I'm not gonna read all of my letter, but um, when our PIO does the press release on this today, if um, my colleagues would like that we would attach a copy of each of our letters. I really don't want these going in a tomb and then nobody knowing what we said today. If you don't wanna do it, that's fine. But I, I think, it, listening to my colleagues, it's very interesting what we've all had to say. And um, I, I just am going to read a few things because I think they touch on what uh, my colleagues have talked about. Obviously, mentioning the pandemic, um, I, I comment that yeah, in all of our years of public service, we've never dealt with such a massive public uh, or health policy issue. Obviously the last pandemic was uh, the Spanish flu uh, uh, back in 1918. Uh, um, I do talk about how distressing it was to serve as an elected official during that time and how distressing and disturbing it was for our staff. Um, but uh, the, the pride I had um, in, in the majority of the citizens stepping up and following those public health orders. I talk about our national politics uh, in terms of the divide, uh, not in terms of partisan politics, uh, with my hope and my wish that 50 years from now, we will have returned to a time uh, when 
people were more respectful, more courteous, more understanding of different points of view. I do mention uh, the major issues I see facing Contra Costa County, which are the Delta, transportation, I mentioned Gomentum Station, um, housing, and again, um, public service and my concern that we, um, that members of the public are not stepping forward uh, to serve even at, either in advisory or elected office because of the tenor uh, of, of recent years and the fact and hope that uh, in the future that will have changed. Um, I talk about the current district and I wish to my successors that they have enjoyed so serving district four as much as I have. And it has been such an honor and a privilege. And I close with my thanks to all public servants, whether you're an elected office, appointed office or staff of our county and our cities because they keep government working and government serves the public. You are all my heroes and my sheroes. And with that, do you think I need it in a baggie or this will be sealed without? Okay, I could put it in a baggie and people would wonder what's a baggie. So um, with that, uh, we uh, can open this to public comment. If there are any callers or Zoom participants who would like to speak on the time capsule presentation, please press pound two if you're on the phone or raise your hand in the Zoom app. Si alguien quiere hacer un comentario sobre la cápsula del tiempo, si están en Zoom, por favor levanten la mano y si están en el teléfono, opriman el numeral dos. Uh, yes, thank you. It's interesting as, as all, although the time capsule is in regard to the county, it's obvious from global events that we are not uh, isolated. We are part of a global community. In uh, 1963, when John F. Kennedy was assassinated, there was basically a coup d'etat, which altered the course of this country, apparently for the, uh, the tragedies which we are now seeing as we closed out disastrously the Afghanistan long-term war and opened up a new front in the Ukraine. So Supervisor Mitchoff, when you say government serves the public, I am in great disagreement with that opinion. Uh, as far as I can tell, you never missed a meal during the pandemic, which is of questionable lethality to anybody under the age of uh, 90. Yeah, there are so many issues that it looks like we're watching an episode from Idiocracy the Show 2022. Um, you know, you guys are going to have to face the truth pretty soon. We, you know, if you grew up thinking that Santa Claus is real and you're, you're 25 years old, you're going to have to acknowledge it when the magic money tree of Christmas stops working for you. It's not going to work much longer. We're seeing it collapse and we're going to all get a serious wake up call. Thank you very much. Next speaker is Laureen. I'm promoting you to panelist. Please accept the invitation and unmute yourself. Hi, this is Laureen Lober. I want to thank all the supervisors. I, I thought you had very thoughtful um, information um, and things to put into the time capsules. And uh, my supervisor is John Joya. Uh, I, I especially liked uh, what you wrote. And there's just so many significant things that were put into this capsule. Um, and I, I do appreciate all of you. Uh, I know it's got to be difficult uh, hearing certain comments, uh, and I think it's a shame now. This is a real spirit here, I think, of community. This is the opportunity uh, to, to, to do that. And then, you know, you've, you're going to still hear criticism, obviously. So I just want to support you, and thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Look forward to seeing the photos, too, that, uh, from this time capsule. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Stephanie. I'm promoting you to panelist. Please accept the invitation and unmute yourself. Yes, I also just want to thank the supervisors for taking the time and the thought to put together, um, you know, letters, meaningful letters, comments, 
uh, pictures of your yourselves and your of yourself and your staff. And uh, I I, appre I especially appreciated the objects, the t-shirts, the pins, the the charger, things that reflect what was going on um, right for us today in the county. And um, I I also agree. I thought it uh, I th I thought it I thought they were lovely. I thought it was just really nice. And I appreciate. The work that you do and this and this uh, that with all things but with the thought with the with this particular project so thank you any of the supervisors have any problem with constructive criticism or criticism uh, that calls us out um, that is not what i was referring to um, but again some view this as the con uh, as their ability to use the soapbox to air all grievances, and that's not what public comment is for. So, um, I think our last two speakers spoke right to the point of what the item was on the agenda, and I thank them for that. 